Welcome to Trionic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. If you are new to our channel, welcome, or if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. Today I'm out here in the garage with my wife's 2006 Saab 95 2.0 liter turbo BioPower. And what we're going to do today is change the serpentine belt. If you remember from my update video on this car from September of this year, we have gotten a slight squeak, especially when cold starting the engine. And I've localized the squeak to the serpentine belt area, and I figured, since I don't know the age of the belt, why not change the entire belt itself? Equipment you'll need are normal sockets and basic tools, such as wrenches. I'm using the 16 and 18 millimeter sockets, also, my wheel nuts are 17mm, so I'm using that one. You also need a 10mm and 8mm sockets, and a 15mm open box spanner. Also good to have is a T20 torque wrench, a breaker bar which will give some more torque. Then you'll also need this, and this is a half inch long extension, together with a really small uh, six point insect tooler. That's for the belt tensioner. Then also a floor jack and the jack stand. You'll need a floor jack in addition to the jack stand because you'll need to lift up the engine while removing the engine mount. Begin by jacking up the front right wheel of the car and then remove that wheel. And the serpentine belt, the main uh, pulley, is located here in the middle of the frame behind this plastic cover. So I'll start by removing this little uh, serpentine belt cover, which is located partially under the inner fender liner. In total there will be 6 bolts with an 8mm head and 2 bolts with a T20 Torx head. And when you've removed all of them, you see that the plastic cover will hang loose, and now we'll just gently remove it. Here you can see the serpentine belt cover in its entirety. It's uh, quite a big plastic thing with a, lot, with a lot of edges and corners. And as you can see, it's also broken and cracked. I've actually got myself a new one of these covers. I will show the part numbers at the end of this video when I'll be reinstalling the new one. But it's very common on the Saab 95s to crack these covers, especially because they're located quite uh, exposed down under, under the car. It's a good idea to check yours. And if you need a new one, they're like 300 Swedish kronor which is roughly 30 euros. And by removing the cover, we can expose the main crank pull here. You could remove the serpent belt at this stage, but it will be much easier if you remove the large right-hand side engine mount. And to do this, I'm jacking up the oil pan very, very slightly. I put a piece of wood between the jack and the oil pan, and then I just relieve the strain of the, of the motor mount a little bit. And now I'm gonna remove the big mount. You'll probably need a breaker bar for this stage, but I managed to get them off quite easily anyway. So the big one here is an 18mm, and the 2 plus 2 here are 16mm. And I've now loosened the bolts, you can see the mount is moving, so I'll just remove the bolts all together, and the nut here, and then I'll take the entire L-corn off. There's also a 10mm bolt here that holds a power steering hose. You'll need a long socket to reach that one. But when you got that bolt out and wiggled the L-corn loose from underneath, you can just remove it to the side. If you're a detailing enthusiast, you'll probably want to go to polish this one. I've seen many Saab 95s where the L-corn and the valve cover has a mirror finish to it. And now we have access down to the serpentine belt. Remember, the engine is now held up in part by that jack underneath the oil pan. So if you were to remove that jack, the engine will fall down about an inch or so. Now we'll need to remove the tension from the serpentine belt. And here in the middle of the frame, you see that square hole in the middle. I'm gonna put a long half inch extension down here. See it fits straight in the hole. Then I'm gonna be using one of these small six point tools. I don't remember the name in English. But the idea is to pull back or forward uh, to the front of the car this extension and then I can slide this little pin as a lock. Uh, there's a hole, I'm not sure if I can show you right now, but you'll slide it in and this will lock the tensioner in its uh, relieved state. 
Now the workshop manual is very clear. This tensioner is very fragile when you pull it all the way to the front. So do not break it. Be very gentle and pull it forward, but do not wiggle it side to side because that can actually break the tensioner and it will have a more expensive job on your hands. Okay, now we can see the little tool there working as a pin holding the tensioner in its place. I actually uh, did one of my tricks. I used the cheater bar to be able to pull with less power on my hands. Now you have to make this cheater bar bend in this way so the force goes on the correct side. And after all this work we are rewarded with an exposed serpentine belt with slack. So now you can see the belt routing here. There are two different routings here. This is the new routing where Saab removed a pulley in the middle of the frame right now. That pulley was prone to failure and they realized that it could just make the belt go straight from this pulley over to the water pump. So if you have a car older than about 2004, you will probably find the belt going down to the middle. Most people recommend that you switch to the new routing. That will cause less trouble in the long run. But I've also heard people having noise issues with the short belt. Those people usually have automatic cars. And there's a slight noise when engaged in drive mode. I will not go into the big uh, uh, mess about discussing which one is best. You'll have to go to the forums and read up and make that decision for yourself. But this is a 2006 model year car and I will keep the short routing. So I will not install a pulley here in the middle. Now remove the belt from the pulleys. Okay, the old belt is out. It apparently is a Saab original brand belt. And it doesn't look too bad. If I bend it here, the rubber seems to be in quite good condition. Also the same with the other way around. So now we can see all these pulleys exposed. The hardest part was actually get uh, getting the serpentine belt of the tiny little generator pulley down there. But eventually I was able to put it to the side and then pull the belt straight out. Next I'm going to inspect the idler pulley, the one that's in the middle of the frame here. To see if that one is causing the screeching. Okay, so I'm hearing a bit of noise. It could be a slight bit of bearing noise as I'm turning. It probably won't turn up on video. There's also a slight play in that pulley. I don't know if that's a normal, but I do hear a slight rattle from the bearing. I highly recommend replacing the idler pulleys while you're at it. And I've got myself a Mapco pulley, part number 23981. It's from Dremen, so it says Umlenkführungsolle. Same number here. This is not the OEM brand, but an aftermarket one. But I think this, this should work good enough. That bolt head on the pulley is a 15 millimeter one and I'm using an open-ended box wrench. I didn't really get got the place for a socket wrench. So I'm just gonna remove this one. So that pulley is really easy to get off. And you might be able to hear the bearing noise here. Some scratching. Here's the brand new pulley from Mapco. It does not rotate freely at the moment, but I'm not hearing any bearing noise at all. So this should hopefully remove the screeching sound we're having. And replacing the idler pearl is just as easy as it was to remove. 15 millimeter open head spanner over there. Now I should have said, before putting the new pulley back in, check the condition of all the other pulleys here, especially the tensioner idler pulley. Just uh, give it a spin and see if it's making any noise. Also spin all the other things here, for instance the AC compressor, the water pump, the power steering pulley. Make sure that they're all in good condition, they spin freely, not making any noise. Also, you could, when you have the idler pulley removed, check your timing chain tensioner of the engine. Because you'll actually need to remove the pulley to get into this hole to remove the tensioner itself. I'm not doing that today, but just a heads up for you if you want to check it then it's a good time now. Now comes the tricksy part, and that's to put the belt back in again. From what I've heard, it's easiest to put it on all the pulleys and save the AC compressor for last. The AC compressor is accessible from underneath. 
So it should be quite easy to pull on as a last step. What I'm installing is a Continental Contitech 6PK2415. And the 2415 of course means the length of the belt in millimeters. Well, you know what? Change of plans. I fiddled with the, getting the belt onto the AC compressor last for a few minutes, but I gave up. Instead I realized if I'm putting the belt onto the idler pulley, that's the last one, I can put some more slack onto the belt by releasing with a half inch extension. And that's what I did, and uh, it took 10 seconds and that's done. So in my experience here, put it onto the idler pulley last and then just give it a small bit of pressure to release even more tension and it will just slide on easy. Okay, so the belt is on. I'm not going, gonna go around and make sure that the belt is in the right place, that all the grooves here are where they should be. Oh, I almost forgot. Before you put the Elkhorn back, you can check to see if your motor mount is in good condition. So, at the current stage, I put the small bolt back to the power steering hose clamp, and I've started the threads on all four 16mm bolts. Then I've started the threads here on the big bolt, the 18mm one, now I'm going to torque all these bolts down. And it seems like my battery powered LED light just went dark. Out of juice. But the engine mount is torqued down with 50 newton meters of torque for all 5 bolts. The next step is to re relieve the strain on the oil pan by releasing the jack that's underneath it. Okay, I'm giving a test start and everything seems to be working nicely. Pay extra attention to the belt and make sure it doesn't wobble or jump around. That looks good to me. And just as I said, I'm putting on a new serpentine belt cover. The part number is 4954954. Quite a funny number, by the way. Okay, let's install this one and put back the wheel and lower the car down to the ground and we should be done. And the cover is on. I put the wheel back on. As you can see, by the way, studded wheels. We are approaching winter here in Sweden, late November right now. I put the plastic cover here around the oil dipstick and we're done. Now I'm going to lower the car to the ground using the floor jack, remove the jack stand that is down here, then I'll get the car out of the garage and make a test drive. The test drive works perfectly, so now I can say that the serpentine belt has successfully been changed in this Saab 95. Importantly, the squeaking noise from the belt is gone. I don't know if that was because of the belt or from the pulley, but at least it's fixed. So I hope you enjoyed this video from Trionic 7, the YouTube channel for Saab enthusiasts. Many of you viewers have probably done this procedure before, and you probably have something to add. If you have, please leave a comment down below here in this video. You can also connect with us on social media. Again, we have Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and Instagram. And I will see you in the next Saab video. Bye-bye.